Well, hello and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers for October 1st, the day of the top dog. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representation of the day of the top dog where we have us an image of, well, what is it? Boom. It's a dog of sorts. Maybe a basset hound. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Maybe the ears are too short there. But he's delivering an old-timey, high-top ladies dress shoe. Uh, appropriate visualization of the day of the top dog? I'm not quite sure. You would think that the top dog would be having the shoes delivered to him or her, not the other way around. But hey, not important. What is important is it is October 1st, and it's somebody's birthday today. That's right. Is it your birthday today? Well, if it is, I just want to extend you a heartfelt happy birthday. That's right. And if this video finds you late, well, I hope you had a happy birthday. That's right. I hope you had a happy birthday. But for everyone else who's joining us randomly, or more ideally, to celebrate the October 1st birthday, I just want to say hello and welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before we dive in with the birthday redirect, there's something we'd like to do around these hair parts, and that's roll some dice. This is the die cast of birthday broadcast, so let's live up to the namesake. Uh, we do it more importantly, however, for synchronicity's sake. And oh my lord, we rolled us... Uh, some doubles <laughs> two and a two four of four that's right uh so some of you may be wondering what synchronicity is well it's simple it's just you getting out into the world and letting the universe show you it's with you on your path and you do that by looking for these numbers now you can roll your own dice it's actually probably preferable out there in the real world though these numbers are intention for you that's right but you get these out there and you're gonna ascribe say directional values to number sets and you roll them to figure out times that's right because what you're gonna do there is figure out a direction to go and you roll yourself a time to see how long you go in that direction and when you get to the end point of that time limit there well you just stop, you compose yourself, and you wait for the universe to show you your sign. Now, you might not see a number, but you might just see something that screams out to you uh, that it's the universe at work. It could be somebody wearing, I don't know, like a hot pink watch, you know, like that just stands out like a sore thumb. And you know what? Roll some dice, figure out how long to maybe uh, follow them, see where they're going. And you know what? Maybe they just lead you to the number four bus. That's right. Hey, that's one of your numbers. So it's things like that. You jump on that bus, you get going, and where do they take you? Well, maybe it takes you down to the uh, number two or 22 stop, right? And when you get off, what do you find? Well, you're at a pet shop. Maybe you're at a puppy mill. That's right. See, the day can take on themes, too. It's just the universe showing you it's with you on your path. That's right. So uh, it doesn't have to be big, grandiose things like that, but just maybe little things like your numbers keep popping up. And it's just, it's just to show you the universe is there with you on your path. So I hope you get out there, get your steps in at the very least, and you see and feel a sum of the magic. It is your birthday, after all, and we want to make it exciting for you. So make it exciting. For yourself. All right, hey, let's dive in with your birthday. Your month is October. Your day, the first. Your sign is seven to nine degrees Libra, of the Libra one period specifically, and your quality and element is cardinal air. All right, October first, the day of the top dog. More often than most, those born on October first are likely to wind up at the top of their profession, social circle, or family structure. This is generally due less to their pushiness or aggressiveness than their ability to function and maintain a far-reaching outlook on life. Others seem to instinctively recognize the exceptional abilities of those born on this day, and this last point can sometimes pose a dilemma as October 1 people may not have a lot of ambition. Indeed, functioning at the top can put an enormous strain on them, and mostly psychological, which they may find difficult to handle. The problems encountered by October 1 people usually center on their careers. For example, it can take years of struggle for them to reach an elevated social position, only to find that it isn't quite what they expected. And part of this reason, part of the reason for this rather, is that they tend to be very serious individuals who may not take enough joy 
in their successes. Indeed, they can be plagued by those problems presented by their work which they are unable to solve. And this is not particularly helped by their perfectionist tendencies, which find it hard to leave things alone. Yet, through the difficulties they encounter, many born on this day, they demonstrate a marked ability to learn and ultimately to progress in their personal development. And as far as their interpersonal, interpersonal rather, relationships are concerned, October 1 people usually seek out involvements with highly capable and decisive individuals, but often those who do not have high personal goals of their own. Undeniably, those born in the stay will choose a mate who can both help and understand their need to further themselves. Uh, the emotional support of such a person is generally crucial to the success of their endeavors. Generally, October 1 people are very idiosyncratic and only know how to operate in their own particular way, or peculiar way, rather. And however, because the results of their efforts are most often impressive, they will be taken seriously and ultimately even emulated by admirers. And when these unique individuals are seen working or perhaps shown in a photograph with peers or co-workers, they will often look out of place or unusual. And they are indeed atypical members of their profession due both to their unorthodox methods and working philosophy. They may come under constant criticism, much to their discomfort, if they focus on their work to the exclusion of important alliances and company politics. And most October 1 people learn what they know not from formal schooling, but from experience. And their professionalism is beyond reproach. And they generally appear polished, self-confident, honest, and above all, dignified. October 1 people usually win the love and respect of others, even if it takes years. And they are greatly missed when they are no longer around and are spoken of fondly by the same people who thought less of them previously. Well, all right. How about that for a birthday breakdown? It gave uh, different elements of both the positive and the negative. And in a lot of cases, it's usually a little more heavy-handed with one or the other. But any event, hey, let's uh, dive into the notes. I like to write a little bit of a commentary on what we've just read. So let's dive into it, shall we? October 1, the day of the top dog. An individual more likely than most bound for the top of their craft or social sphere thanks to their ability to cultivate a far-reaching outlook on life. All right, and the reading claims you are also recognized for your abilities, which, surprisingly, composes a psychological stressor. I found that interesting, and especially if lacking ambition. See, and I wouldn't have assumed that, uh, or at least that they would include it anyhow. But you're expected to uh, put out when you don't want to, if you like, or more aptly, if you don't like. And I'm assuming that's where they get that stressor from. Uh, the reading also mentions a lack of joy in the job being an issue, especially the dynamic of having risen the ranks at a place you don't find any joy, and hence lacking any joy with the associated successes. Uh, some may say, so what? Suck it up. You're at the top, right? And pragmatically speaking, I suppose. But, that, uh, but part of that stressor is the all-too-common nagging decision, I would assume, of doing what you love for little or no money versus a job you abhor for security, which completely understandable. I think we all kind of uh, have to deal with that at some point. But the reading relates an ability to learn and progress in personal development. So uh, just know that the universe is apparently on your side if you decide to go all in on yourself. All right. Just know, too, you're going to have to get ambitious if you do, for those of you who aren't ambitious. All right. I do find it interesting your ideal mate is found in a highly capable individual, but someone who is without goals of their own, all right? And who are these people, right? Uh, I know they're out there for sure. I've certainly read a few of their birthdays, uh, but it makes like zero sense to me. So uh, anyway, you have a very individual way of doing things to the point of being admired 
and emulate it. You're a professional and a perfectionist, and there's a common theme right there with Libras, uh, it would seem, and you're missed when you're gone, all right? You have a certain uh, perpetual, which called legacy, if you like, and that's kind of cool. Uh, so all in all, you're quite the person to know, it sounds like. And I found it interesting that it said, when your photo's taken, you seem out of place. <laughs> that's interesting. I don't think we've had that in the book just as of yet. In the event, that's been your first day breakdown. Let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Those born on the first of the month are ruled by the number one and the sun. And people born on the first like to be first all right and those ruled by the number one are typically individual highly opinionated and eager to rise to the top and october one people may have fixed feelings or mixed feelings rather about their role in life but usually have the stamina stamina and concentration to hang in there and regardless of frustrations or confusion the sun symbolizes strong creative energy and fire which is best kept flowing steadily rather than allowed to sporadically flare out of control. And the combination of Venus, which is Libra's ruler, and the Sun lends a romantic and an idealistic aura to October 1 people. All right, there's been your numbers in your planets. Let's see what I had to say here. A little bit of copy-paste job, but they did personalize a little bit, so right on sometimes they don't do that all right hey you're number one in the sun for that highly individual highly opinionated and eager to rise to the top energy now usually the sun days tend to drill down on a very specific dynamic and blow it up to intense proportions usually to the point it defines the day and the breakdown and i suppose rising to the top could be argued to be that dynamic but that seems rather tenuous in my opinion, all right? Barring those aren't ambitious types, I'm assuming, you know, naturally. Uh, but who am I to say? Maybe it speaks volumes to your personality and you were surprised by what they had to say. Um, but to that end, I'd say it's interesting that Venus is your co-rulership. That romantic and idealistic energy probably helps curb some of the sun's energy or intensity, or probably the sun adds intensity to that energy. Did they say it uh, curbs a little bit of it? No, it said it lends to it. So I would argue the sun, is it heightens it. But um, I'm telling you, like you go look at some of those Leo folks and those number one energies, it's just so much more intense with the theme. Um, and your theme was uh, a little more, what do you call it? Ebbs and flows, I suppose. But here nor there. That's been your numbers and your planets. Let's move on to your tarot. That's right, the tarot, the uh, more eclectic of the new age metaphysical philosophy and ideology, if you like. But hey, it's here in the book. It's fun. Let's see what they have to say, right? We don't have to take it home with us, but uh, let's broaden our horizons in any event. The first card of the major arcana is the magician, who symbolizes intellect, communication, information, as well as magic. That's right. Over his head is an infinity symbol, which in some tarot decks takes the form of a hat, in others, a halo. Many interpretations may be drawn, one of which is that the magician recognizes the cyclical and unending nature of life and is empowered by this understanding. The positive traits suggested by this card include diplomatic skill and shrewdness, but negatively, lack of scruples and opportunism. The choice rests with an October 1 person whether to settle for superficiality and illusion or strive for more worthy ends. All right, a little personalization there. A lot of times, again, just a copy-paste job. In any event, what I have to say about your tarot, the magician for intellect, communication, and magic. All right. Uh, for that recognizing cyclical natures and using it to your advantage energy. All right. And perhaps what lends to your abilities to rise to the top. Uh, the diplomatic positive powers probably don't hurt with the necessary politicking either. But yes, you are going to choose. Are you going to choose superficiality or worthy ends? That's interesting dynamic there. All right. That's been your tarot. Let's move on with your health. I know I didn't say much about the tarot, but hey, sometimes it's a little difficult. <laughs> All right. Are you going to choose the worthy ends? I hope you do. I hope you do. All right. 
Once again, let's move on with your health. All right, those born on October 1, whether of the more practical or spiritual type, it says, interestingly, it doesn't usually say that, will generally be aware of matters concerning health. And if their perfectionistic side is focused on improving or maintaining their condition, they will look after themselves impeccably. If not, they are quite capable of disregarding it altogether. October 1 people must be especially uh, must especially be aware of damaging their kidneys and other internal organs through poor diets and drugs all right and for this reason a balanced diet one reasonably low in fat animal protein alcohol and sugar should generally be complemented by nutritional grains low fat yogurts fresh vegetables and other healthy foods all right hey what do we have to say about your health let's get into it practical or spiritual all right uh the reading claims you're aware of matters concerning health uh, looking after yourself with perfection in mind all right conversely surprising you might disregard it completely so it sounds like it's all or nothing right or you know ambitious or not ambitious maybe uh, regardless much like other libras concern for your kidneys and vices gets mentioned especially the stimulants the sugars and the nicotine and the coffee maybe they didn't mention coffee but that gets mentioned a lot uh, same with a balanced diet it's surprising how consistently this is carried through with the libras uh, it usually is not the case uh, no real mention of psychological health though but perhaps we'll dive into it with your advice that's right let's get into your advice bring more consistency of effort into your life and, uh, they just speak into the less ambitious folks or not who's to say uh, shed some of your fears and concerns and beware of self-fulfilling prophecies and learn to delegate responsibility all right very valuable i would say but interestingly this is probably the shortest amount of advice we've seen it's very close so what i have to say here consistency they say shed some fears and concerns ostensibly you're taken to worry i would assume uh, and i think they mentioned that in the breakdown let's carry on in the book because i ran a space on the page uh what with your perfectionist side rather um taken to worry um, beware of self-fulfilling prophecy uh perhaps rising to the heights of somewhere you don't want to be question mark uh, delegate responsibilities maybe you're taking too much on all right especially tasks that don't necessarily require your attention uh, and when your time is better spent elsewhere hey i know you want to get it done right but sometimes uh, you got to leave that to other people to try and prove themselves right send the elevator back down especially on the trash that isn't doesn't require your attention that's right uh, which goes for employment or your own endeavors that's right yeah are you gonna are you gonna stay with the secure job or are you gonna take the gamble are you gonna roll the dice right and go in on yourself who's to say but uh, we'll get to that here in a minute let's take the energy down just a hair and dive in with your meditation your meditation all right when two parties are trapped in a bad situation and one is incapable of thought or decision, the other must decide for both of them. All right. Hey, a little bit loaded, a little bit wordy. Sometimes it's only a word or three. Let's get into it again. All right. Are you ready? When two parties are trapped in a bad situation and one is incapable of thought or decision, the other must decide for them both. All right. Hey, there's your meditation. I'm not going to break it down for you. It's your birthday. It's your meditation. I don't want to throw some spin on it that might influence you uh, one way or the other. So any of that. Once more, when two parties are trapped in a bad situation and one is incapable of thought or decision, the other must decide for both of them. And I'm going to leave you to decide what it means. That's right. Okay. Now that we've got your meditation in the can, so to speak, let's move on with your strengths and your weaknesses. Oh, all right. Your strengths and weaknesses. Your strengths, you're unique, you're dedicated, and you're dignified. All right. And your weaknesses. Are you ready? You're crisis prone. That's a first. You're indecisive and aloof. 
All right. Crisis prone. All right. Be mindful. Be mindful. All right. And with your strengths and weaknesses out of the way, let's dive in with those born on this day. That's right. Those born on this day. Let's find out who shares your company. Um, and this is another opportunity I like to take right now to find out and explore the ideas of your passions. And it's interesting they drilled down on this for the breakdown as I uh, try to make a habit of diving into this. But for you, it sounds like it might just be the perfect opportunity. Uh, and I say that because I get out in the world and meet folks and I ask them what they do and more importantly, if they enjoy it. And a lot of times they don't, all right? And so I think this is the perfect opportunity to see just what other people have done with their lives, especially the ones that like put their stamp on the the social or the cultural zeitgeist, if you like. And maybe if you find yourself in a position where you don't know what your passion is or you haven't had time to, to put in the work to figure that out, well, maybe you can take some inspiration from what other people have done. That's right, because you know what? I think in a lot of cases, we don't have the time to put in the work because you gotta get that job right out of school, pay off them student loans. And so you don't have time to put in the work to figure that out. Hopefully, we can draw some inspiration. So let's dive into it, shall we? All right, we start off strong with a top dog for sure. Jimmy Carter, a U.S. president and a Georgia governor, and he negotiated the Israel-Egypt peace. He was a philanthropist, a peanut farmer, I believe, and the writer of Keeping the Faith, or Keeping Faith, rather. We have Vladimir Horowitz, a Russian pianist and the last romantic virtuoso. Uh, Gret Waits, a Norwegian runner, nine-time New York marathon runner. Hey, now, that's a lot of times to win a marathon. We have Rod uh, Caro, who's a uh, baseball infielder, or perhaps still is, <laughs> seven-time AL batting champ, MVP, 3,053 career hits. Interesting. Uh, we have William Rehnquist, a Supreme Court Chief D uh, Justice, Julie Andrews, British stage film actress and a singer, Richard Harris, British stage film actor, Walter Matthau, another film and stage actor, James Whitmore, U <laughs> New York stage actor, uh, Stanley Holloway, British song and dance man, it says, a uh, film and stage actor, Albert Collins, blues guitarist, Bonnie Parker, bank robber of Bonnie and Clyde, Annie B. Uh, Besant, a British mystic, a Theosophical Society president, and a social reformer. We have George Pappard, a film and TV actor, Randy Quaid, a film actor, Donnie Hathaway, soul singer and apparent suicide, fell from the 15th story window, it says. Um, Jeez, that stinks. Um, any event, uh, let's move on. Bring the energy back up. Uh, Henry III, the British 13th century king. James A. Pattinson, a Canadian businessman and uh, responsible for the Vancouver Expo of 86. Um, we've got Mark Edmund Jones, an astrologer and a mystic. And it says Saban symbols. And he lived to the age 92. We also have Mary McFadden, a New York fashion designer and Vogue contributor. And by all uh, intents and purposes, it would seem that most folks born in this day are likely to be actors. Uh, they had quite a few of them listed. So oh, maybe take that as your passion, I used to say. Uh, but with that, that rounds out those born on this day and by and large, your birthday reading, except to say, your season is fall, your sign once again is Libra of the Libra one period specifically, and your quality and elements is Cardinal Air. And this has been October 1st, the day of the top dog. That's right. From the Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers. Having a feeling for this book down in the description, if you're looking for a book to grace your coffee table, something to figuratively or literally break the ice, you know, considering its girth, it's gonna get uh, either one of those jobs done in kind. That That's right. But that's not what's important here. What's important here is wishing you a happy birthday. So I just wanna say once again, happy birthday. For everyone else who just joined us out of curiosity or to celebrate uh, the o October 1st birthday, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed yourself and you join us for your birthday read. And lest we forget your daily numbers, you tune your two, four, four. Get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. All right. And once again, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves.